Welcome to our live training session number 35. We're going to be taking a look how to tune an EG Honda Civic with a high compression built K24 engine using Honda to K-Pro. Let's jump into some details about this vehicle. Now it's going to have a K20, K24 engine swap that's been done. So it has a K24 bottom end, 87 and mil bore, 12 and to one forged pistons. It also has lightweight forged connecting rods, still using the factory Honda K24 crankshaft. Now on the top end, the cylinder head is going to be drag cartel ported. It has supporting valve train and has drag cartel 3.2 cams. On the intake manifold, well, it's a skunk 2 intake manifold that's been ported by 4 piston racing. It has a 90 mil throttle body and a 3.5 inch cold air intake. It has a race header and a 3 inch cat back exhaust. On the fuel side of things, it's going to have ID 1000 cc injectors, an upgraded in tank fuel pump. It also has external lines and regulator. Now, in addition to this, it has a flex fuel sensor. We're going to be doing our tuning on both 93 octane and on E85. So we're going to see the entire process from start to finish. We're going to be shooting for 300 horsepower plus. Let's see if we can accomplish this. So let's jump into our live training session. We're going to be creating our base calibration first and then starting off our tuning process. So let's get started. Welcome to our live training session here with our K24 swapped EG Civic. Now we just went over all the details of the vehicle. Let's jump into our K-Manager software so we can begin creating our base calibration file and get our engine fired up and running. So moving into our K-Manager software, we're first going to go and create a completely new calibration file for this. There's going to be nothing in the directory that we can select that's going to get this engine fired up and running because it is so much different, so much radically modified internally compared to, let's say, a stock K20 that we're going to have to start off with something that's going to be essentially a generic file and then edit everything from there. So that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to go through the entire process from start to finish to get us ready to start our do doing our tuning process in the next video. So first things first, let's move into new calibration. Under new calibration, it's going to be where we select our base calibration type. Now looking at the top of the screen here, we see RSX Type S Pier B. Now this is a Pier B style ECU, so it's actually the uh, the 0 02 to 0 04 RSX Type S ECU that we're working with in this application. We can see in the drop down here, there's a whole bunch of different options here: P and D, P and F, Pier A. Um, in this case, again, we're going to be selecting Pier B. That's the ECU type we're working with. Um, obviously, this is an EG Civic. It's not going to be an RSX, but that's going to be primarily what we need to be concerned with here. So the ECU type we're going to be uh, going in and doing our tuning with. So Pier B is what I select. Now going down our list here, there's a ton of different files here. If we stretch this out a little bit, there's going to be a ton of different choices. In this situation, there's going to be no choice in our directory list here that's going to be compatible with what we have done here. We're going to have to create everything from scratch. So again, that's what the purpose of this is going to be. What I'm going to do here, just to make sure everything is going to be simplistic and we can start off with essentially the closest to stock base file, I'm going to go here to the K28-2RSX stock.cal. That way I know I'm going to be starting off with something that's not modified. Now, some of these files here are scaled for larger injectors. This does have larger injectors installed, but again, this is not going to be relevant for this application. So let's go here and select a K20A2. Now, this is a K24 engine or bottom end, so it's definitely going to have to be set up completely different than this file as well. We'll go over how to do that as well. So now that we have our file open here, we have two different sections that we can do our editing in. We have our table section here. This is going to be our fuel table, our spark timing tables, and then we have our cam angle tables here. So we are not going to jump into this first. We're actually going to go into our parameter section. The parameter section is this other section we do our editing in. It's more of the background uh, details and information that we need to program. So map sensor information, fuel injector information, throttle position scaling, any of the sensor setup that we may want to add into the uh, ECUs, maybe fuel pressure, oil pressure, we're able to do all that here. So let's go and jump from the upper left hand corner in our parameter section. Let's move all the way down here to the lower right hand corner here. Uh, we're going to go through all the tabs because everything needs to be configured and set up specifically for this vehicle. So first and foremost, let's jump here under advanced. This is going to relate to our deceleration fuel cut. When we lift throttle, it's going to be shutting off the injector. Now, because this has these larger drag cartel 3.2 cams on the larger injectors, I'm actually going to go and raise my deceleration cut point up here a little bit. I'm going to leave alone the load thresholds here, but the lower portion here, the overrun cutoff min. So it has to meet this threshold in order for it to go in and start to cut the injectors off. And uh, we, what we want to do, because we raised or idle speed, are going to be raising our idle speed to around 1,000 RPM. We need to raise these up accordingly. Stock idle speed is around 750. So what I'm going to do is actually add another 250 across this entire table just so I can offset 
the increased idle speed as we're coming down into idle because we want the injector to turn back on so it doesn't create any kind of stalling problems as we're decelerating back into our idle condition. So I'm going to go here, Control J, and I'm going to go Add to Selected Values, and I'm going to type in here 250. So 250 RPM, that should be pretty sufficient here to kind of get things going and uh, avoid any kind of issues with a deceleration fuel cut potentially kicking in and causing stalling problems. So into the analog inputs, this has an AM 30-4110 wideband. So it's been wired into the analog position zero on our controller here. So let's go in, we're gonna go here to the input, we'll say analog zero, name, we'll call this wideband. And the conversion, we're gonna go select that down our list here. So the 30-4100. So the 30-4100 30 or the 30-4110 have the same calibration scale. I'm gonna select in this case the 30-4110. Actually, I believe that's the part number for the uh, the gauge that we're working with. Either or will work here. The scale is exactly the same. And we shouldn't have to update anything else in this information portion here. When we get it fired up, we're going to be comparing what the wideband reads to what the software we reads. That's going to be imperative that we make sure that's going to be matched um, if we're going to be doing our tuning process based off of our wideband. And we're taking a look at our actual data logs. We want them to be within a tenth of an error fuel if we're making our actual editing changes. We want to make sure it's as accurate as possible. Again, we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, this is naturally aspirated, so we don't need to do anything with boost control. We're going to make sure the boost control option here is not toggled on because we're not using it. The closed loop, we definitely want to utilize the closed loop control for idle and part throttle that can guide us in the tuning process. We'll be looking at that in the next video as we get the engine fired up and starting to tune the low cam uh, fuel tables here. So what we're going to do is the closed loop operation. Because we've wired in the wideband to the analog zero, we're going to repurpose that for closed loop. Now this does not have the O2 to O4 Type S primary O2 sensor. It's much cheaper, much easier just to wire in the wideband and allow it to use it for closed loop operation here. And this is a K-Pro version 4. So we have to have K-Pro version 4 in order to do this which this does have. So we'll go here to external wideband. We'll select that. Now, if you had different options, if you wire your wideband into maybe a different input pin, you'd select that. In this case, it is analog zero. So we're going to select that right here. So I'll keep that on. Now, this is... Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos are going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.